a, a pedirle a, a Bilio, por favor. Si tú, yo sé que vas a hablar un poco esta noche, pero no puedes orar. Yo no puedo orar, no se va a escuchar. Debe estar de... <risa> ok, ok, ok. Entonces, por favor.
caminaban siempre juntos en Noki Dios. Vivían como amigos en dulce comunión. Un día estaban tan lejos de pasó sanando al enfermo dando el triste paz y amor solo era un peregrino en medio del pecar vino a mostrar Leonard Johnson, secretario ejecutivo, y por su servidor, Filiberto Verduzco, damos una bienvenida a todos los presentes a esta ceremonia para acompañar a la familia González Núñez y expresarles nuestro afecto 
y palabras de consolación. As we express words of consolation for the loss of Pastor Erwin Alexis Gonzalez, husband, father, and grandfather. May our Lord, through his Holy Spirit, grant comfort to all the family. Welcome. Let us pray. Father, which art in heaven, may the honor and glory be directed to you only. We praise your most precious name because your willingness and disposition that you always have toward us permits us to come to your throne of grace. But at this very special moment, we are saddened because our brother and friend and colleague now rests, waiting for that trumpet sound. We already missed him. And along with his wife, Lilia, and his children and grandchildren, we want to thank you for the peace and strength that you have given each one, and that you will continue to shower them as they wait for that great moment of reuniting Dear Father, we ask for your loving comfort for the rest of the friends and relatives that will feel the absence of our colleague and our brother and our friend. Let us or keep us faithful Give us this marvelous trust in your promises so that day by day we would be able to wait anxiously for Jesus' return. And as we are united today from different places and countries of this world, we would all say yes. Come, Lord Jesus, these words of our prayer, we place them before you, your throne of grace, and we pray in Jesus' name, our Savior and Redeemer, Jesus Christ. Amen.
la lectura bíblica esta noche. Our scripture reading is based in one of the favorite psalms of who was our colleague, uh, friend, Pastor Erwin Gonzalez, and it's Psalm 51, 51 says, Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions. Wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you are proved right when you speak and justified when you judge. Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. Surely you desire truth in the inner parts. You teach me wisdom in the inmost place. Cleanse me with hyssop, and I will be clean. Wash me, and I will be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquity. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners will turn back to you. Save me from blood guilt, O God, the God who saves me and my tongue will sing of your righteousness. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. Do not delight in sacrifice or I would bring it. You do not take pleasure in burnt offerings. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O oh God, you will not despise. In your good pleasure, make Zion prosper. Build up the walls of Jerusalem. Then there will be righteous sacrifices whole burnt offerings to delight you, then bulls will be offered on your altar. This is God's word. He would always greet you with a smile, proposing ideas and solutions, everything with organization and promptness his determination in his plans and projects inspired to action. He said, friend, hi. He would always tell when he would meet his colleagues, breaking the barriers, the protocol, and with his strategies as a good uh, literature evangelist, he would always greet you with a hand on your shoulder or with a hug. Erwin Alexis Gustavus Esteban, he was born in a Seventh-day Adventist home, 28th of July of 1971, 61, in Chiapas, Mexico. From his young age, he surrendered his life to Jesus, and very soon he began to call port, and uh, he then married Lilia, who had of course, very fruitful life, not only for his family, but for the World Church. His first day as a pastor was the 1st of August of 1986, way back then in the Mexican Conference, South Conference. His 
project was a blessing for his district for two years and a half until he was called to direct the publishing department in the conference south of Chiapas in Tuxla Guterres, where he was also person minister's director. In 1993, he would call to Pichucalco, then in the state of um, Chiapas, where he was there until 1998, when he was called to be the president of the mission in Oaxaca. In 2001, he was president of the Tabasco Conference only for a couple of months until God called him to uh, serve in the education area as the president of the University of Linda Vista. And he was there until 2008, where he was called to direct the publishing uh, house in Mexico. And that was then become HEMA. That's an institution of the Inter-American Division. In 2012, he was appointed as associate director of the Inter-American Division Publishing Ministries. And then later he was appointed as the director function that he was uh, doing until God called him to rest. Our dear friend and colleague, leader and pastor, and most of all, servant of God, he is survived by Lilia. We have his children and of four grandchildren because we know that Jesus died but resurrected. And in the same manner, Jesus will resurrect who slept in him. En esta ocasión, queremos agradecer profundamente a todos nuestros hermanos, amigos y pastores el aprecio y el cariño que nos han mostrado nuestra familia en memoria de mi padre. Queremos agradecer también a la Administración de la División Interamericana, a la Administración de la Universidad de Montemorelos y a la Administración del Hospital La Carlota por el apoyo brindado en el cuidado de mis padres al estar enfermos y por estar pendientes para suplir nuestras necesidades. Hoy, como hijos y familia, queremos agradecer a Dios por el privilegio de haber tenido al Pastor Erwin González y su esposa Lilia como nuestros padres. Nuestro padre, el Pastor Erwin, fue siempre una inspiración para nuestras vidas. Nos dio su amor y cuidado en todo momento. Siempre nos animó a superarnos en la vida, a ser cada día más excelentes en todo. Como esposo, mi padre fue un hombre ejemplar. Fue un esposo cariñoso, amante y protector, que siempre hizo provisión para suplir todas nuestras necesidades, como familia, y aun cuando no está presente, nos da la tranquilidad de estar seguros. Como abuelito, era un abuelito muy cariñoso. Todos sus nietos lo aman por igual. Sobre todo, nunca olvidarán las historias y experiencias de su vida que les contaba al apostarlo. Sin duda, su ausencia será un dolor profundo en sus corazones. Como pastor, ustedes lo conocieron. Amaba predicar la palabra de Dios, no importaba el lugar, la hora, la circunstancia, lo hacía siempre con mucho amor. Tenía una visión muy grande para emprender proyectos y con su liderazgo hacía que las cosas pasaran. Como hijos, estamos muy orgullosos de lo que fue, del legado que nos dejó y lo que será cuando Jesús venga por segunda vez y podamos estar juntos como familia entrando al reino de los cielos. Gracias por estar aquí con nosotros. Queremos que sepan que hay un profundo dolor en nuestros corazones, pero en medio de esta tribulación, Dios nos ha mostrado su misericordia y amor al traer resignación y paz para nuestras vidas. Lloramos y sufrimos, pero no como los que no tienen esperanza, porque veremos pronto a nuestro Padre. Por eso, hermano, 
Hermana, amigo o amiga, si has perdido un ser querido, prepárate, porque Cristo viene pronto. Maranata. Amén. Amén. se acerca y el miedo está en mí lucha se hace incesante dolor, angustia miseria y desastre acechan ya mi sentido de fe y mi confianza en ti Decía que estoy derrotado, no habrá motivos para desistir. Mi lucha está comenzando, me levantaré.
potente esperanza mía. And decision. 1978 2020. Erin Alexis Gonzalez Esteban. Seven points of encounter as my friend, as my colleague, and of course, a friend. One. Central Church in Cardenas, Tabasco, where for the first time we met. Two, that's Montemorelos University. Three, district pastor. Four, director of publishing ministries. Five, president of local fields. Six, President of Gema Editores in Mexico and seven Inter American Division. These were the encounter points that I had with my friend Erwin. There is not enough time to speak or give details of each of these points, but let allow me please to maybe share one or two. That's this central church in Cardenas, Tabasco. We were very inquisitive young people, young people, but we were worried and uh, had the disposition of be someone in life. Once there was a call porter that came to that church, Francisco Moreno, and I was the director of the youth department in church and Erwin was part of the membership. Francisco Moreno said, you can do something, go to Montemorelos University. And he explained to us how we could go about applying. And Thursday of that same week, we met to decide. And without knowing that friendship would have lost 40 plus years of very important moments that today I want to say, dear friends, and especially the Gonzalez family, we want to celebrate his life. It was not so easy at the beginning, especially when we went to the Montevallos Mont University. When we got there, we did not go straight into the classrooms. We went as a uh, student worker for a year and a half so that the following year we could begin our studies. Then the most difficult part began because money then depleted and we didn't have money enough to continue. So we went to Colport. We did so for eight years and it was a tremendous blessing for us. And then we graduated in 1985 from the theology department. These were very important moments. 
Let me share with you some of the things that happen there in Montemorelos. Once we, we were always together. They used to tell us number 11 because I weigh 35 kilograms and Erwin actually weighed basically the same. So they call us 11, number 11. When we began work, they told us we were assigned to the maintenance department. We thought that they would give us food to make us robust, but no, it wasn't like that. The maintenance department was the department where we would be working. We had never done such a work, but there is where they appointed us. When we came from Cardenas to Montemorelos, it was around three in the morning. When we opened the windows of the bus, we said the name China. Uh, we, when we saw the arrow that said China, because we had never actually gone beyond Cardenas. So we said how we cross the ocean to China. No, it wasn't the China that we know is China in Nuevo Leon, Mexico. But today I want to express my appreciation to him. Our first professor was Velasquez. He was the supervisor of the maintenance department. We got to the dorm and they sent us to the rooms. Erwin and myself. The following week, they received someone else to come and they would help him with his conduct. The Dean of Boys said, here is this young man that came and you will help him with his discipline. And especially you, Irwin, you're going to help. But his father called once to this young man and the father asked, who are your companions? He said, I live with two young people who are industrial workers. And the father said, I need to talk with these two young men. Ask them in how many parts of the country they have industries and what are their specialties. And Jesus Susiger, the young man, said, my dad wants to know you. And he's coming on Sunday and he wants to talk with you on Sunday. And why? Because I told him I live with some industrial students. Susiger, he thought that we were rich children because the industrial concept, he understood it different. That Sunday, Erwin was the first one to get out of the room and we went to high. I followed him before this guy's dad arrived. There were so many things that kept us binding our friendship. But life continued and it was said while he studied, he got married to Lillian. I was a witness and I sign in their ceremony. And Italy, when you were about to be born, I was there with your dad waiting for you to be born, your first daughter. So many things. There are so many points of encounter with my good friend. Their brethren and their family there are so many things that I can relate. But this evening, I want to conclude inviting you to celebrate the legacy of my great friend. A legacy that for me, it's important to mention, Lilia, 
and that's the family he was able to form with you in Italy. Today, you are a nurse and the wife of a pastor, Erwin Jr. You are a civil engineer and computer system and you're serving the church. Jenner, another son, you are odontologist. That's the legacy that Orwin gave along with his wife Lilia, that today can be seen, that today we can celebrate, that today we can give God thanks for the life of our friend, my friend, Erwin Gonzalez. He touched or impacted the life of many students when he was president of Linda, Loma Linda University. As pastor, district pastor, and administrator, he also impacted the life of so many. His passion, of course, were the colporters. That's the legacy that impacted so many lives. There's a passage of scripture, dear friend and uh, friends. I'm going to read this that is found in Jeremiah. I, I'm the only one that know your plans. They are not for your bad or for your evil. It's for your good. I will give you a future full of blessings. This is what Erwin and I believe. That without an evidence, we were able to reach this place. With, but studying with all our efforts, but hoping that in the future, God would have something for us. And praise be his name that up to now, it actually happened. It is so interesting for those of us who knew Erwin Gonzalez very well. He is a man of valor, a man of tremendous faith, and also of decision. And I would like to read a paragraph that dedicates his life Acts of the Apostle, page 82, he says, this sanctity is not superficial, it's as submitting or rendering your life to Jesus Christ, is to do the will of our Heavenly Father, is to trust in the Lord in the trials and in darkness, as well as in the light, it is to walk by faith and not by sight, is to trust the Lord without vacillating and to rest in his love. Five things that during this past weekend have made me wonder and think a lot or meditate. Yes, it's a weekend of suffering and a separating from you, Lilia, and Idali. Erwin and January. Yes, it's a moment that seems to be a separation, but I want to invite you, dear friends, that you could meditate in the following manner. Five important lessons for this important moment and for the future, dear Gonzalez family. The first lesson, the first point of this evening, that's to reinforce our trust in God. And I would like with all my heart, because I consider myself a friend, a 42 years friend of you as a family. I want to tell you Lilia and children, this is the moment you need to reinforce your trust in God. Number two, this is a moment to add, not to subtract, Let's add every good things that our very good friend did for his family and for his church. 
in life, sometimes we do not uh, press to the mark. We fail sometimes. And maybe my friend failed in some areas. But at this point in time, what we want to do is add everything that he did for the honor and glory of God. Number three, it is a moment it's a moment to understand that while Jesus comes, we should learn to live one day at a time. And dear Gonzalez family, I want to invite you to live one day at a time, but with your hope placed in the future that Jesus is coming soon. And once again, you will be able to see your father, your husband, and of course, we will see our great friend. Number four, you should never forget that after sin, our life has an expiration date. And that's why we die. But that doesn't matter because point number five this evening will help us to advance in the midst of our limitations. And number, point number five, dear friends, is that to all of you, and especially the Gonzalez family, I want to invite you to renew your hope and your faith in the supreme promise of God, which is eternal life in Jesus Christ. May God bless each one of us and may he give us his peace and tranquility. Thank you very much. What I will say is with profound sadness, but with a tremendous gratitude to Pastor Erwin and to our dear sister Lilia, and of course your children. My first years in ministry, we knew that he was the president of the North Conference. Uh, from there onwards, my ministry was impacted by a positive leadership visionary. He was my counselor for the first three years of my ministry. There I began to admire this humble servant of the Lord. When he got there as president of the local field, he met that field in crisis, but a field with a great potential, but had uh, an administration crisis. The financial indexes were below the required, but he invested in the workers, he invested in our families, and he invested in the church leadership. He united us as a team. He motivated us. He encouraged us and told us that we could do things better. And in the worst crisis of that field, he invested a lot of resources in this great work. And because of his leadership with him, we had the first trip as ministerial staff, which then became a, an activity that was done every year. That conference very shortly became very sustainable. And today, this is one of the strongest financial local fields. We always remind, remember him with Linda Vista University president. Through his leadership, he was able to change the status of this college to university. How in the world we are not gonna be happy and thankful to this leader, great leader. Every time that I ask him to be with me in an activity of our church, he always had time. And every activity was an inspiration for us as administrator, as pastor, with call porters, with teachers, or with the church in general. We were able to have a 
true bond as friends. And of course, not only to him, but his dear family and children. We spent good times together. We had fellowship together. We traveled together in many occasions and we wrote each other. And of course, we enjoyed ourselves in many occasions. In 2019, when I was in Miami for two weeks in an English course, him and his wife opened the doors of their house. He gave me everything. He gave me the key of his car. He insisted actually that I take his keys. I told him, no pastor. He said, you treat me so well when I go to your house. How will I not give you with great pleasure everything that you need? October of last year in the pastor's day, I had a long conversation with him. I reminded him when I began my ministry and throughout all those years, how the Lord has had helped him to inspire me. I thank him. I prayed with him. And then he wrote me and he said, he said, thank you very much, friend. I appreciate those sincere words and your good desires toward us. My wife and I would always want to do the Lord's will. The day he was admitted in the hospital, he told me, Nachito, I will be hospitalized. I have COVID. I have been prohibited to speak, but we have a tremendous God and I am trusting in him. I feel very stable and we continue writing each other. The last thing he wrote me was, he says, we sing happily in our heart and we repeat his promises at any time. At some point in time, God will free us. On behalf of my family and the administrators of our local fields and on behalf of the Linda Vista University, on behalf of the church in Chiapas, I say Sister Lilia and Erwin and Jenner and Idali and your, of course, in-laws and your grandchildren. Thank you so much for lending us you, this great servant of God. Now we bid him farewell. We are bidding farewell to this great friend and a servant of God. He will be sleeping the sleep of the righteous, but soon he will resurrect and we will be able to hug him. We will be able to travel again with him. We will just be enjoying God's presence every day. Don't forget, dear family, that we love you so much and God also loves you much more. May God bless you and strengthen you and comfort you.
Hermana Lilia Núñez de Gonzaga. Dear sister Lilia and children, Idalí Erwin Jenner González. Pastor Erwin González Esteban actually left a legacy in Gema Editores as he was the president of that institution between 2008 and 2012. The legacy that he left in this publishing house was where he created the policies in to benefit the cold porters they he implemented the distribution the massive distribution of the books in mexico he made contracts with the mexican publishing houses he also had a permanent communication with the publishing directors of the five unions in Mexico. He instituted the National Council of the Publishing Ministries. He established two stores or ABCs in Coatzacoalcos, Veracruz and Mexico City. But the biggest legacy that he left to us was his friendship, friendship with all the pastoral staff. One of my colleagues, of course, is Pastor Erin Gonzalez, whom I work with for 20 years. The last time I had contact with him through text message or WhatsApp was Sabbath of December 19th at 5.50 p.m. when he expressed his concern for his wife because he had the trust in God that he will go through this without any problem. As his friend, I have wept because he has departed, but I have the hope that I will meet him very soon when Jesus comes, my dear family, Gonzalez, please be assured that on behalf of Gema and all the ABCs and the colporters in Mexico, we are certain that he will be risen and you will meet him once more. May the Lord be with you all. We love you so much. La Secretaría Ministerial. Ministerial Secretary of the Inter-American Division expresses our gratitude for the pastoral ministry of Pastor Erwin Alexis Gonzalez, known to us by Erwin as Erwin. As our secretarial department saw him as a person committed to this church, not only doing what he was doing as the director of the publishing ministries, but he was supporting the spiritual retreat where the pastors having session with the fields. He had crusades. He had children's presentation, baptisms. He was a person that loved the pastoral ministry. And as we have heard, he was a person that was wholesome. In all areas, he developed a ministry for the honor and glory of God. In the pastoral ministry, he left a footprint that we consider highly important because after he passed away, we have received hundreds of comments expressing the suffering and the pain they're going through because of his departure. So dear family, be known that there are so many who are missing him. As pastor, he was always willing to serve. The 21st of October 
of last year, we had a pastor certification and I asked him to accompany us in the program and have the prayer. And as always, he was willing of doing so. And I told him, thank you very much, friend. And he says, friend, I'm always willing to help. Besides that, he had sympathy as a pastor, his compassion when he saw the needs. He, he once told me, what can we do? Where can we help? We will try to find ways of helping this pastor or this family. As pastor, his disposition for justice that everyone should be received. And in the program that we have, Logos, he supported that every pastor would have that program motivating, helping, so that we can reach so many pastors in the Inter-American Division. We actually were able to unite 2,000 uh, of pastors to register with this Logos program. He, as a pastor, had God's heart with his compassion he actually felt what someone else would be feeling and he would express his sympathy and try to assist and help those that needed assistance and changing their lives. The ministerial secretary, we join with our colleagues expressing to the Gonzalez family on behalf of the more than 3,500 pastors in the entire Inter-American Division, our word of assurance is that we are with you. We are praying and we are asking God to sustain you with his powerful hands until he comes for the second time. They shout and the Lord hears them. Of all their anguish, he frees them because the Lord is close to those who are afflicted and he saves those who are saddened. That's found in the book of Psalms. In this moment of profound sadness, their Lillian family, uh, on behalf of of thousands of pastors, wives in Inter-America, we want to express our profound sadness. We join with your sadness and suffering, and we join with you in prayer. Today, as never before, we long for Jesus' second return, and we cling to that promise that yet in a little while, and that who shall come will come. I imagine that moment as the song says, when your name is called up yonder, then Lily, Erwin, and you and your children will meet him again. You will meet him as a family. Pastor Erwin will be able to see you. And this time, it will never be to depart anymore. Dear Lily and dear Gonzalez family, please feel the hugs from each pastor's wife in Inter-America. We do love you. We are accompanying you right now in your suffering and sadness, but most of all, we are also accompanying you with that blessed hope that very soon we will see Jesus coming on the clouds of heaven, and there will be no more sorrow, no more pain. May the Lord bless you. Hoy aquí no comprendemos plenamente la razón de tanta injusticia y sufrimiento en derredor porque el sufrir del justo 
aumenta más y más Quizás no lo entendamos hoy aquí Y más allá, más allá lo entendemos Más allá, más allá podremos ver Dear family and friends and uh, all of those who are accompanying us tonight, we want to express to the Gonzalez family our deep appreciation and we greet you on behalf of God's most holy name. There is an author that says that it, what a man does is what he has in his heart and soul that we translate into actions. We could actually say in the like manner that what matters the most is not the riches of our talents, even though they may be many, and never is not the amount of our resources, not even the sum total of all the tasks that we have done or the distinctions that we receive. What actually matters most in the sight of God is the quality of our being, and that's the intensity and the in-depth of our love. And as someone said, when we die, we will not be judged by the amount of work that we did, but by the deep love 
that we placed into it. We are meeting today through this virtual platform to pay our respects and to show our love and appreciation for Orwin Gonzalez. And I would say that he is a man, a big man, because he was a great servant of our God. And we unite here with you, Lilia, and children, and the family, of course, the grandchildren, to assure you that we are with you and to show, show you that we understand your loss and that we share your pain. We are here gathered for everything that we have lived with Erwin during the past eight years here in the Inter-American Division. Erwin would report of the visits he did in the 24 unions. At the end of the year, he would be happy and as to say mission accomplished because I was in all the unions of Inter-America. We are here gathered because of everything that we have lived with him for the 35 years of service for the Seventh-day Adventist Church and for everything that he has left in witnesses and we have heard so uh, many of them expressed by our colleagues and again we are gathered here because we share his faith because we share his hope and the certainty that soon and very soon jesus will come Yeah, Jesus will come soon. He used to hum this song. And so many times he wanted to recruit me to sing in his choir or group. But today I did it in public. Pastor Verdusco shared with me a couple of words he wrote before he went to the hospital and he wrote, I will continue to believe in the God of my childhood and of whom I have preached until the end of my days. And my last conversation with him before he was admitted to the hospital and before we pray together, do you remember, Lily? That was a very realistic man who knew his condition and he understood that he had to go to the hospital. I, he, I told him, you could do, give you something here in Montemorelos. He said, no, I have to go to the hospital. He was a man of great conviction and faith in the Lord. Here we are gathered because we believe that we are mortals and that way beyond of our human ambitions, our joy and our love, there is something more, someone who is calling us and that at the end of the day gives some kind of sense to our life. Our calling, his calling to the mission and his passion Pastor Gonzalez lived it with the publishing department, with the young people too, as well in the Linda Vista University. We used to see him interact with the same passion that I saw him with the kind of work that he did with the call porters. Erwin and I, 
I remember our last conversation in this COVID period, he had his concerns as to how to be able to place more books in the hands of those who live within our territory. And the title of the last book was Hope in the Midst of Chaos. He would come to my office to intercede for those called porters because he wanted to see the books spread like leaves in atom. Now we come to remember this valiant soldier of our Lord, that colleague who was fully committed to the Lord. He was, it was a very uh, friendly person here in the office. But I want to remind, remember him as a family man who loved his wife and his children and, of course, his grandchildren. Of course, the rest of the family. Today, we celebrate this life and the example he left for the upcoming generation, an example of how to conquer the obstacles and to show compassion. And to witness the love of a compassionate God and faithful to all his promises. Today, in our celebration, the Lord wants to say or wants to tell us that he did not create death. He did not create suffering. God, of course, is not the one responsible for this pandemic that is actually taking away so many of our colleagues and families and friends who are suffering for those who have departed. God has created us for happiness and for life. But after sin came in, who is the one responsible for everything that is happening to us now? Well, of course, this is the consequence of sin, of our enemy, the devil who came to this world. But God made a plan, and his plan is that we will be able to recuperate that which was lost and to restore mankind to happiness. And that's why, because of love, he sent his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He instituted in our heart the profound desire of eternal life. Our hearts thirst for more love, more than the world can give. Our minds are thirsting for more truth than the world can show. Our being has to be more uh, or a longer lifespan than the world can offer. And the only source that can supply that thirst is Christ Jesus. And I go back to what I said earlier on. May his love abound in us. May that be our experience. Regardless of our circumstances, we who are here accompanying you, Gonzalez family, we are not in your shoes, but of course you are suffering, going through a very special moment where we want to em show empathy. We live it from outside. Some have actually experienced it, but our experience today is that we believe in Jesus' love, and Jesus' love is extraordinary, and he is willing to receive you and to receive all of us 
in his powerful arms and to show us the horizon, the glorious horizon that awaits us. You remember that text that says, Romans chapter 8, 35 to 39, who will separate us from the love of Christ, tribulations or anguish or persecution or nakedness or danger or sword as it is written by your cause we have been suffering but in every moment we are more than conquerors through the one who loved us therefore i am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor the present nor the future nor powers above or below nor anything created can separate us from the love of god which is in christ jesus our lord as christians we must continue to demonstrate faith and should project to that future which is filled of hope we need to remember that the great liberation day will be coming that glorious day when all of us will walk without any suffering without any pain where we will be free of all these kinds of anguish that today we are going through and uh, loneliness that great day when the lord jesus will come to take his children to the will take them home where he according to revelation will wipe away all tears from our eyes and there shall be no more death and there shall be no more crying nor pain because the former things have passed away that and done in that day we will be singing this song of moses and the lamb orwin will join the redeemed to do what he used to do with much pleasure and he would rejoice us as well here in the office and then in the fields where he used to go as well and then at that very moment we will sing with him for the redemption of our hearts and then we will sing redemption is close to us these words lilia and dear family Dear Gonzalez family and the Inter-American Division family, that hope, colleagues, pastors, family, let us continue to sing those words the way Irwin would have done it, preparing for our encounter with Jesus Christ. Maranatha, Jesus is coming soon. There, Lilia. This note is inspired from sing songs of Solomon. The lo love is songs of Solomon, eight six. Lilia, I imagine that when in Montemorelos your friends would ask you why is your loved one better than the rest of the love he, of course my loved one is better because his name sounds like music to my ears and it invokes the presence of the waves 
Yes, my beloved is passionate for service and very friendly. Such is my beloved one and such is my friend. Lilia, we are united with love or you united with love with Erwin were able to rear a family regardless of the difficult moments you may have had, but your life and his life were joined together forever. I know the pain is so immense right now. And now things would seem to be unmovable as obstacles without Erwin, but I ask you to be valiant. You are not by yourself. May you cherish in your hearts those precious moments that you spent together as husbands and wives, husband and wife. May you maintain those very solemn moments Oh, Lilia, who has a family and uh, colleagues, continue to hear his voice. Lilia, we, as your colleagues, are there with you and to assist you and your friends and your family. May we hug you so strongly, so be cheerful. Jesus, who was with Martha and Mary, when they went to Lazarus' tomb, he is there with you. And the same thing he promised to Orwin, he is promising to you eternal life. God is love, and he is asking you to continue striving to be faithful. We love you, Lilia. God bless you. At this moment, I would like to invite each one of you who are listening to us um, to kindly bow your heads. We're going to pray for the for Gonzalez families so that the Lord will take them in this very special moment, embrace them and feel the love. Let us bow our heads as we pray. Our dear Father, sanctified be your most holy name now and forever. You are our God. You are, are the God of Abraham, Jacob, and Isaac. You are Pastor Irvin's pastor. Your God of his family. Today we want in a very special manner to place your hands upon our dear sister Lilia and also place your hands on Idali and Erwin and Noe and Erwin as well and Jenner with their spouses of course with the grandchildren. Lord, we want to ask that you will bless them in a very special manner. At this moment, hundreds and thousands of your children are claiming for your presence in their lives. We know that in this world, we have so many challenges and crises, but we know that in Jesus Christ, this will not be forever. And we know that those who have gone before us will not be gone forever because someday we will reunite with them for eternity. Lord, please allow that this difficult moment will not be a hindrance because we actually don't see what we are not able to see in the future. But dear Lord, Please take each member of Gonzalez family in your powerful hands and bless them with the promise of your presence and the promise that you made to Erwin to be with him, to be 
be, be the same promise for the rest of the family and for all those who have made this covenant with you. May his children, may his grandchildren may be able to see God's hand directing their lives, protecting them and fulfilling or answering the prayers of all those who interceded for him and his family. They are in your hands and we ask that you will fill them with that love and that hope that you will soon return. Thank you so much for listening to us. We pray in the most precious name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Hermana Lilia. Dear Sister Lilia, Ida Lee, Orwin, and Jenner, and Noe and the rest of the family. On behalf of our Mexican, Chiapas Mexican Union, we want to hand over to you the this very special token because of the very legacy that he gave us here in Chiapas and to the eight fields and on behalf of our administrators of the eight local fields and the administration of Linda Vista University, we give you this work of art who goes with all our hearts. Dear Lilia and family, don't ask God to give you a, an easy life. Ask him to make you strong as persons. Never lose faith because the good beginnings come after the worst ending because yet in a little while that who will come, will come, and Jesus will come, and he will say, my dear friend Erwin, he is asleep, uh, but I will wake him up. Of course, Pastor Erwin used to dress well, but now he will be dressed with a white robe because he will be immortal, and he will unite with Jesus Christ. He will be looking for his wife. He will be looking for his children in-laws, he will be asking or looking for his grandchildren as well, and they will join and go together to this eternal home. May this image place your sight, not in the pains and the suffering, but in that extraordinary day with much love to comfort you in that blessed hope especially to you, the Gonzalez family. A big hug and to each one of you. consumará pronto vendrá pronto vendrá pronto vendrá qué glorioso encuentro muchos han dicho en su nombre soy el Cristo guerras rumores de guerra oímos ya pronto vendrá pronto vendrá si sí, pronto vendrá se cuenta
resucitará Pronto vendrá, no tardará, Él volverá Pronto le veremos En un instante seremos transformados Nuestro vestido será de inmortalidad Pronto vendrá, pronto vendrá, sí, pronto vendrá, el glorioso encuentro. behalf of the administration and the staff of the Inter-American Division, I would take pleasure that you were with us with in this service celebrating the life of Erwin Gonzalez. God promises that he will soon come for each one of us and in Revelation, he says, Lo, I will come very quickly, and my recompense or reward to each one of you according to your works. We embrace the Gonzalez family in love, and we continue to pray so that each one of us will be amongst those who will say, Maranatha, we and receive our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for being with us and may the Lord bless you always. Se 
su nombre soy el Cristo. Guerras, rumores de guerras oímos ya. Pronto vendrá, pronto vendrá, sí, pronto vendrá. Que yo yo se encuentro. Jesús volverá 